So the local search ranking factors, what is it? It was started by David Mim back in 2008, 12 years ago. So uh, he started this amazing survey where he would survey the top experts in local search and just ask them a series of questions to try to identify what, how does Google's local ranking algorithm work? And so these experts are in the field studying all the time. Uh, in 2017, he passed the reins to me and I've done it the past uh, three times. We published it, I wouldn't say the past three years. I, I missed a year or two in there. But uh, we're surveying the top experts in local search. We have uh, all the greatest minds that are in the trenches doing local search day in, day out, really researching, studying, trying to understand how how the local ranking algorithm works. And so the benefit of this survey is that all of this amazing information gets downloaded to your brains. And so you, you can just absorb the collective knowledge and because I, I compile everything in aggregate and we identify what do most people think is impacting rankings. So let's get into some of the results. Uh, the first question that I ask is for local pack rankings to what extent do each of the following thematic areas of Google search contribute to rankings at Google? That's a bit of a mouthful, but basically what factors impact local search uh, rankings? So the local pack and local finder. Just to be clear, this is a local pack. You see that all the time. Search for like Seattle personal injury lawyers, you get a local pack. And then if you click that link at the bottom that said more places, that one there, then it goes to what's called the local finder. And that's you know, more than just three businesses. It's the rest of them. It's all the other businesses. So if you're in position four, you're trying to make it break into the local pack because you have great visibility there. That's what we mean by local pack and local finder. And so I, I asked them to score the seven main areas of local search, which uh, are Google My Business, citations, on page, so basically your website signals, links, reviews, behavioral signals, and personalization. Um, and so what they do is that they kind of assign a score to each of the primary areas. So, you know, this one's worth 30, 5, 20, 20. Anyway, these are my scores. This, this, is what I, this is what I guessed at. I don't know. It's interesting to see. Uh, lots of us have a different idea about how Google weights these different areas of local search. And so after that, um, I tabulate the results. And we can see that uh, in aggregate, we have... Uh, for the local pack finder, Google My Business score the highest at 33, then reviews, on page, links, and then that other stuff. Basically, it boils down to these four main areas, and it's interesting to see how strong GMB is. Um, and so let's look at how this has changed over time. So if we look at these uh, signals from 2013 to 2020, there are two really interesting themes here that you can see uh, both in GMB, the rise of it, and in citations, the decline of it. And so the rise of GMB, I think, can somewhat be attributed to the investment Google has made in Google My Business. Google has added so many features and has really turned GMB into an amazing platform for local businesses. And so there's a lot of businesses out there that haven't looked at their listing in the last three, four years. They set it up like five or six years ago and they have no idea of what's in GMB and it, it's amazing. And so the local search practitioners are seeing all of these new things that Google has been doing and they are taking advantage of them. And so you should too. Um, and then the decline of citations is another story that we see over time. And so this is when you go back to the, you know, early days of local search, Google um, didn't have its own great knowledge base of data about businesses. So it really relied on the outer web, all the business directories that, that refer to your business. That's become less and less important as Google has really built its own amazing uh, database. It is now, it, it's like, you know what? We're the source of truth for this. We don't really need to leverage all those other directories as much as we used to. I think they still play a, a role, but it's quite small. And that's why you're seeing this decline. There, it's just not as important as it used to be. Back in the early days, you would just build a bunch of citations and you would rank. And it was like, ah, cool, citations, help me rank. These days, there's a lot more to it. So first we looked at what impacts rankings in the thematic areas uh, for the local pack and finder. Next, we want to look at how does it impact for the local organic results. And so let me 
point out what the local organic results are. It's those. It's the blue links that are underneath the pack. That's your local organic results. Survey says uh, it's mostly your website and your links. It's no surprise. We're getting into traditional SEO here. And so these other signals, like what you put on your Google listing, I don't know why those are upside down like that. What you put on, uh, you know, the reviews you're getting, your citations, all that has a pretty small impact. Behavioral is a little bit bigger here. And that makes sense because like people clicking through how much time, whether they bounce back to the search results, that's all uh, important for your local organic results. And so it's interesting to compare these two. You can see that. So like uh, ranking in the pack finder, it, there's more emphasis on the Google My Business signals. Ranking in the local organic, you see these two blue spikes. That's your website and your links. That's, that's what's really impacting uh, rankings for the local organic versus the pack finder. All right, so the next question I ask in the survey is, what individual factors do you think have the biggest uh, impact on the pack and finder rankings. So the way that participants have to do this is they just, there's a list of 122 factors on the left-hand side grouped into different groups, and they have to click them and drag them over to the right-hand side, and then they have to organize them into the order that they think is best. And I put so painful here because it's kind of hard. It's like, you know, once you get the first five to 10, you're like, okay, that makes sense. These are these ones are roughly in order, but anything like beyond ten, it's like eh, it's hard. Like, is this factor more important than the other? But you know, we try to sort them. We try to indicate some kind of importance, and it allows me to put some kind of score on things. So I score them uh, based on the position that they've sorted them into. It's like the top spot is worth twenty, next spot's worth nineteen, and then I aggregate that across all the different contributors to order in order to come up with a score for that individual factor, and so. This allows me to say, well, the participants think this was the most important factor. This is the next most important factor. And it's not perfect. It's all opinion-based, but it's interesting. And so it allows us to get a sense of what people think is most important. So let's look at the results. Uh, here they are. This is, a, this is the top 15. Now, there's, a, there's 85 other factors, but these are the top 15. I'm not going to make you read a big page of text. It's too hard. So I'm going to go through some of these for you. So number one is primary GMB category. Your, your primary category, hands down, is the number one thing that you can optimize on your listing that will impact your ranking. So getting this category right is super important. What category should you pick? Um, it's usually pretty obvious. It's like, I'm a plumber, so I want to rank for plumbers. So I'm going to pick plumber as my category. Uh, but it's also helpful to use uh, this great little uh, feature, our little Chrome extension from George Nenny. It's called GMB Spy, and it allows you to go to any listing on Maps, press the little Chrome thing, and it'll show you what categories your competitors have. So, you know, you can look at like 10, 20 businesses in your, bit, in your industry and see what categories they've selected, and it might spark some ideas about what might be a more important primary category. Um, the next number two thing is keywords in the Google My Business business name. So the, the name that you enter for your business, yes. If you put keywords in it, it'll actually help you rank for those. And it's very significant, strong factor for local ranking. So this example is a prime example of what we call keyword spam. So they've stuffed every keyword they can imagine that they want to rank for in here. And you can guarantee that it's helping them rank. And so sadly... Uh, that's true. It, it definitely does help them. But it is against the Google's guidelines. And if you do it, you are at risk at getting your listing suspended, which would be bad. You don't want that. Um, Joy Hawkins did an amazing study on this, like how much do keywords impact your uh, ranking? And you can see like when she added the keywords, boom, they went from like 50 all the way up to like position five. They took the keywords out, dropped again. Oh, put the keywords back in. There you go, back up. And you can also see it in like your your proximity radius, how well you can rank around your business in the local pack results or local finder results with the keywords in the business name. Oh, ranking really well. Take the keywords up, not ranking as well. That really has a huge impact. This is why it's number two on our list. And I don't know, Google needs to fix it because it really encourages spam. I'll talk about spam later. Um, proximity to the searcher uh, is, in, is the number three most important factor back in an I don't know if the last time I did it or the one before. This was the number one factor, but it's basically Google is trying to return results to you that are close to you. So if I did a search for dentists, 
then, and I did, uh, you'll see that all these dentists are within one kilometer of my actual location. I can see them, they're really close to me. And so Google tries to show you businesses that are close. And what that means actually is that it's really hard to rank outside of that in the local pack finder. So it's very hard to sort of break out of five to 10 kilometers, miles. It's really hard to sort of rank beyond that. And so some businesses can do it and you can do it with all the other signals uh, by sort of expanding your radius. But in general, proximity to searcher plays a huge role in how well you're going to rank. So if you're close to the searcher, you're going to rank better. Um, this is such an interesting thing. It's like people don't really realize this. They think, oh, I want to rank around the whole city. Most businesses are going to rank, you know, if, if you're standing up in front of the business's front door and you do a search, you're probably going to rank them. That business will rank number one. But as you get a little further out, you'll see that the business ranks, you know, like kind of further away. And so like in this case, the business doesn't even rank in the local pack, just in the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, and this can even change block by block, like every street corner you go down. So like I, I wanted to test this. I did a little drive around my neighborhood. I was going to pick up our groceries. And so I stopped every couple blocks and I did a search and I wanted to see how the rankings changed. And so you can actually see the results of this here. So right at my location, we have, this is the three pack. It's these three businesses ranking. I go up one block. Okay, fine. Same businesses. It didn't really change from one block. I go another block. Okay, now we have some new businesses. This, uh, Cindy Newfield has come into the rankings. I go another block. Oh, Cindy's gone, but Glenora Family Dentistry and Empire has come in. You, you can just see that, how the rankings change as I go spot to spot. They, they change. And so that, that's what we're getting at here. Rankings do change significantly depending on where you are. And that's why this signal is so strong. And this, this illustrates how strong that signal is. Number four is having your physical address in the actual city of search. And so this amazing study that, that, uh, that Colin Nielsen did at Sterling Sky uh, really demonstrates this. This is a business there. You can see this is the outside border of a city called uh, Olath, and they are just right outside of it, right? And so if you look, they're listing... Um, it says Google thinks that they're in Lenexa and you can see that because back here, it's just, just outside, right? So it's actually in Lenexa, but even though her mailing address is in Olath. And so this business is like, how come I'm not ranking in Olath? I'm in Olath. That's my address. And you can see because Google thinks she's actually in a different city. She has a really hard time ranking in Olath, but she works really well in Lenexa. And so that's what this signal is getting to, is getting to the, the, that detail that you really need to have your address in the city in order to be able to rank well. All right, number five, additional categories. Once you get that primary one done, make sure you add as many other categories as you can. And go back to that, that category uh, extension that I mentioned, GMB Spy. And you can use this to see, like, what are all the other categories that I should be targeting? And so it's really valuable to add. You're going to cast a wider net. Every category you add, it's like another keyword you, you're going to rank well for. These categories have a strong impact on your rankings. Number five on our list. And so um, another awesome study by, uh, by Colin. Oh, wait a minute. I think Joy did this other study, didn't she? Oh, no, this one's Colin for you. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, another study by, by Colin is uh, he was just checking out whether adding more categories would hurt your listing, and it didn't. In fact, it actually had the opposite effect. It improved listings and improved rankings for, for their terms. So there's another uh, study to back up that, that statement. But just one caveat, caveat, I don't know how you say it in the U.S. Or versus Canada, but um, if you add a bunch of really weird, obscure, unrelated categories, it can actually have a negative impact. So just make sure that you're not adding totally weird categories. I tried like hat shot, hot, hot dog stand, hair removal, sexologist. I, I put in all these different categories on the white spark listing. And it was really interesting to see that like overnight, our local finder rankings dropped. And then once I took them out, our rankings went back up. This is from our uh, local rank tracking software where, where I track all this stuff. All right, so an important tip is that Google is often adding new categories. And so it's really valuable to make sure that you're checking for new categories all the time because um, if they've added a category that you could benefit from, you should definitely put it on your listing. So you, it's like 
free rankings, basically. It's like if, if they didn't have that category before and they have it now, every month there's a whole bunch of new ones coming in. So make sure that you're always checking and adding categories. Number six is quality authority of inbound links to domain. So inbound links are referring to other websites linking to your website. And you can use a tool like Ahrefs or Moz uh, or Majestic or SEMrush to check your links. You can see who's linking to your website. These are different software systems. But just to be clear, because a lot of small businesses maybe don't get this, it's not websites that you link to from your website. It's other websites linking to your website. So for example, this is the University of Alberta linking to uh, Pringle Law's website. Um, and you know, some links are better than others. That's the essence of this, this factor, quality authority of the links that are linking to you. So for example, this business has a, a few links, one from Crunchbase, one, a, a few from the University of Alberta. These are very high quality links. That's what we mean by quality. Whereas by example, the, these links are not so high quality. This is some Asian directory. This is uh, business directory edmonton.ca, which just doesn't have a lot of authority. It's a new directory. Uh, Pringle Law coupon code, some coupon code directory. These, these are low quality links. These are high quality links. That, that, that's the sense. Basically, the easier the link is to get, the lower the quality is, is kind of one general way to think of it. Um, number seven is keywords in reviews. This is a huge ranking factor. It's basically the more people that mention your, your keyword in the actual review, that can have a pretty big impact on your rankings. Uh, one pro tip there is when you ask for reviews from your customers, say, hey, please mention the service that you had performed, and then you're going to get those keywords in the reviews, and it'll help you rank for those keywords. So that has a huge impact. Uh, some people have asked, uh, do keywords in owner responses have an impact? And they don't. That has been tested. You can keyword stuff your, your responses to reviews all you want, and it won't impact your rankings. Number, set, number eight, this one's obvious. Uh, Google likes to rank businesses that are highly rated. So having a good rating uh, has a, a pretty good impact on your ranking. If you rank, you know, two or, or lower, generally it can, it can hurt your rankings. Number nine is spam fighting. So this is what, uh, you know, the second ranking factor, uh, keywords in the business name, kind of ties into this. There's different types of spam fighting, but this one here, um, well, I'm going to talk about the uh, keywords in the business name. And so what you can do with spam fighting is if I see a business that has keyword stuff, business name like this, I can go suggest and edit, change the name, change their name to the right name, and then uh, leave some feet. And then Google will be like, hey, thanks for your feedback. And usually within a day, uh, that will be approved and their business name will be back to its normal name. When that happens, they drop from the rankings, your client or your business moves up. So that's what we're getting at when we're talking about spam fighting. That's, this is a new factor I've added to the uh, survey this year. And a lot of people think this is an important way to improve your rankings. One thing I thought was funny is that Google says, your feedback won't directly influence the rankings of any single page. I guess they're thinking about it differently than we are because uh, when we change a business name, it'll definitely affect the ranking of that page. The, they'll drop like a rock. All right, there's 85 other factors. I can't dr drill through them at all. So I will be publishing the results of this survey soon enough, and then you will have access to the, the full results. Should have it published within uh, a couple weeks. Uh, but, you know, if only there was some kind of checklist you could use. Wouldn't that be great if you could just, like, take this as a checklist? That would be great, Darren. And so uh, we built one. Uh, it's, it's available at weisspark.ca, local SEO checklist. And this is a checklist built off of the local search ranking factors. So it's ordered by the uh, importance of the factors. And so basically the way it works is you add a business and then each business that you add has its own checklist. And so you can keep all of your different businesses organized, multiple checklists, and then uh, you can work through it. So here's Mims Charcoal Grill. This is a real place. And uh, you can just check off uh, the factors as you do them. So it's a great way to sort of keep your work organized and go through. And some of these factors are uncheckable, like keywords in the GMB business title. Oh, we're not even going to let you check that because that's spamming Google. So don't do it. All right. So uh, that's our tool. Check it out. I think it could be helpful for you. Uh, so the next question I asked was, same thing, sorting the factors. What do you think the individual factors are that impact rankings in the local organic results? 
And so just to remind you, these are local organic. It's the blue links under the pack. And the survey says, there they are. List again, too many factors to read on one page. So I'm just going to break it down. This comes down to two things. Number one, build a bunch of links. And then these are some individual factors related to those links. So, you know, what are the quality of them? Do you have keywords in the anchor text of the link? Do you have, you know, how many do you have? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So link building, great, do that. And then the other piece of it is your website. And so, you, you know, those organic, local organic rankings are really driven by your website and your links. And your website is like, how much content do you have? Does your content speak about the key phrase that you want to rank for is your website optimized, your title tag. Do you have enough content? This is a big failure of many SMB websites where they just, they barely described what they do. And so more content will always help you rank better and making sure it's responsive, making sure, uh, you know, you've got it optimized and the keywords. Of that. That, that's what this basically gets down. And so, your local organic visibility is important. So don't think, oh, well, I only care about the pack. The local organic visibility is extremely important because if you rank there, it's very likely you're going to rank up here. You're going to improve your rankings down there by investing in your website, investing in links is very important. All right, question three I asked. What have you been focusing on more this year than in previous years? So this is to get at like, hey, what's, what's new and hot in local search? So if that says, um, removal of spam listings through spam fighting, that is hot. People are doing that <laughs> these days. And it, it makes sense because when you, when you bump out the spammers and spam's becoming a huge problem, all those people are stuffing keywords into their business name. When you remove them, you rank better. So, hey, do that. That is, uh, that's really growing in popularity this year. Uh, building links is really growing in popularity. Completing your GMB listing. So this is what I got to at the beginning. GMB has added so many awesome new features that most businesses aren't even taking advantage of. Watch Ali Markson's talk where she's going to really go into detail about like, it's mind blowing how many people are not taking advantage of all the features. So having a nice complete GMB listing is what people are focusing on. Focus on getting more reviews and making sure that primary category is dialed in. And so, okay, well, what are you spending less time on? Well, survey says, what do you think? Citations. So basically, citations, people are spending less time on this. They, they have realized that consistency on other citation sources, like consistency on the greater web, you, you got a wrong phone number on myhuckleberry.com, is okay. You don't have to fix that. It's, it's not going to hurt your ranking. So that's old school local SEO. The new school SEO is, hey, don't worry about fixing every incorrect citation on the web. Don't worry about building out hundreds of citations on all the directories. It's a smaller signal. And so there are more things that are more important that you should focus on. And all of these signals get to the heart of that, that there are better uses of your time and money than investing in uh, citation work. Um, all right, myth busters, which I, I love this question. So I added this this year. There's a lot of people that think a lot of things about local search that are wrong. And so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask this question to uh, try and get that to the broader community of SEOs that these things do not impact your rankings. Here they are. We've got keywords in the Google My Business description. Let's, let's dispel that myth right here. You can stuff your Google My Business description with as many keywords as you want. It has no impact on ranking. So, yeah, there you go. Can't do it. Don't do it. Keywords in the, the services. No. Turning on GMB messaging. That's not going to impact your rankings. Uh, keywords in products. No. Nope. Google doesn't even look at those for rankings. It's not part of the local search algorithm. Oh, maybe if you buy advertising, Google will rank you better. No, that doesn't happen. Oh, what if I stuff my Google posts with keywords? Will that help me rank better? No, it won't. But uh, it will give you this awesome little related search thing, which I'll, I'll show you uh, a little bit later. Um, presence of an appointment URL. Do, do you have the URL? Will that help you rank? No, it will help you rank. Uh, if you're adding lots of posts on a regular basis, no, nope, that doesn't impact rankings. And then consistency of citations on other sources, they don't impact rankings. I think it's great for that to show up because like I talked about, my Huckleberry, wrong phone number, don't worry about it. All right. Now, this one didn't come up in the top 10, but please let me, let me highlight this one because it's very important. A lot of people think that I am a plumber. I service the whole city. 
So, oh, great, Google provided me the service area section. I can just put in every zip code that I service, and I'm going to rank in those areas. No, I'm sorry. Google doesn't look at this. They don't care about what you put in here for rankings. It, it's like there's like the ranking team, and they're like, service areas, I don't even know that exists. So it has no impact on your rankings. All it does is draws this map. That's all it does. So if you maybe set your service areas, you're going to get this nice little map on your listing if someone searches. It's like, oh, what areas do they service? Thank you, Google. They service that area there. That's all it does. No ranking benefit. All right, question five was, which individual factors do you think have the biggest impact on conversions from GMB? And the reason I wanted to ask this is because, you know, ranking number one doesn't mean you're going to get the lead. There is a, a push in the industry to, like, be like, hey, it's not all about rankings. It's also about, hey, you know what's even better than rankings? Getting phone calls, getting people filling out our form, getting people coming to our business. That's that's actually better than rankings. And so Ali Margeson put in her presentation this great example, which I have borrowed. Thank you, Ali. And so it this is a great example showing a search for drain cleaning Edmonton. So the number one rank here is all about drain cleaning LTD definitely benefiting from drain cleaning in their in their business name. But that makes them rank number one. But look at that stupid listing. They got like one review, no pictures, no um, no Google posts, no anything. Now I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for drain cleaning. I, I, I'm looking through the results. Oh, look at Mr. Reuter here. 628 reviews, 4.8 rating. I read the reviews. They got this cool related to your search thing that pops up because they've been active on Google Posts. And so the Google Posts that reference drain cleaning, they're getting pulled into their knowledge panel. Boom, that's amazing. You want that. And so, you know, evidence for why you want to focus on Google Posts. Look at all these great photos. All right, this is the company. So I, this, is, this example is particularly interesting to me because I did this. This was like a week ago. We had a drain problem in our house. I had to find someone to help with it. I went to Google and this is the company I called. I called Mr. Reuter. They don't rank number one, they rank number four. And so how do you convert more people from the search results? Survey says, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure you have high ratings on Google. That's obvious. You want to make sure that people are saying good things about you in the review text. You want to make sure that uh, the, the you have lots of reviews that have uh, text in them, you want to make sure you're close to the business. That, that's interesting. It's like people will convert higher on businesses that are close to them. Uh, turn on the messaging feature. That's smart. It might not impact rankings, but it actually will improve, improve conversions because now people can instantly ask you questions. Uh, make sure you have your proper hours set. Make sure your listing is well built out and complete as this example shows. Make sure uh, you turn on the booking feature. If you have the booking feature, it's a great way to instantly get conversions right off of Google. Um, post regularly and fill out your Q&A. These are awesome. So these, these 10 things are things you should be doing. Make sure you check out Allie's talk. She's going to dive into all of these. All right. Negative factors. Which individual factors do you think could actually hurt your rankings? What are the things that can hurt your rankings? Well, look at that. We got incorrect business category. Yeah, put the wrong category in there and uh, that'll hurt your rankings. Uh, listing at a false business address. This is a spam signal. You've, you've, you've created fake addresses, PO box, UPS, other kinds of like virtual addresses that can hurt your rankings. You have a hacked site. You can refer to these later, running low on time here. All right, I wanted to talk about the commentary. So the comments are often full of great uh, tips, things that uh, the the contributors are seeing. So it's really great. So I asked a question, what are some strategies that are working really well for you at the moment? Uh, one of the big ones popping up in all the comments are spam fighting. So you can see some of the things people are saying about that. You know, Andrew Shotland th says that narking on GMB spammers is definitely working. It's helping. You know, it basically spam reporting leads the pack when it comes to strategy. So spam fighting for sure was a big theme in the commentary. If you would like some advice on that, uh, Jesse Lowe has this fantastic comprehensive guide to how to spam fight. You can check that out. Um, another thing that's really uh, was a theme in the commentary were reviews. Lots of people talking about how, you know, focusing on reviews is always helpful. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, is working really well for them right now. Uh, any tips on it? Reviews, 
I've got a very comprehensive guide. This is the presentation I gave at MozCon a couple of years ago about reviews. And so uh, we turned that into a, a blog post. This is how to get the most, get more reviews and, and turn those reviews into a conversion machine for you. All right, so uh, what you what did you used to do that doesn't work as well anymore? No surprise, citations pop up a lot in the comments here. They just don't seem to have the impact that they used to. People spending lots of money on services like Yext, uh, like a recurring fee, a little bit mind blowing, or just spending, you know, building a 200 citation. That stuff doesn't work the way it used to. Uh, you know, get your citations cleaned up on the sites that matter, build out like another 30, 40, and call it a day. That's all you need to do with citations now. Uh, what are some methods that you're using to try to influence behavioral factors, if any? And so this stuff, a lot of this behavioral factors ties into um, kind of some of the same things that we're talking about with conversion factors, you know, just taking advantage of all the stuff in GMB, making sure that you have that turned on because when you have a well-built out listing, you're going to get more people clicking on it, more people engaging with it. Those are behavioral signals that Google will pick up on and it'll help your rankings. Uh, any comments about where you see Google headed in the future? This is a, an important question. Um, you know, what, what's in store? And so uh, basically Google's headed to the bank. <laughs> and they are, uh, they're going to keep monetizing. So we're seeing this happening all the time. Local services ads are rolling out to more industries. Make sure you check out Tom Waddington's talk. Um, they've just added this new Google Guarantee Badge. And so they're just looking for more ways to monetize. Google is a publicly traded company. They have a mandate to continue to make more and more money. And local search is ripe for them to uh, continue to monetize. And so we can see a lot of that. That's a lot more of, you know, organic getting more ads in it. There's so much to fit in. Uh, I couldn't get it all in this one presentation. I will be publishing the results in a couple of weeks. You'll be able to dive in there, read all the comments, see all the different factors. This presentation is just scratching the surface of the highlights of it. I look forward to publishing it and uh, hearing all your feedback about it. That's all I have for the presentation. Uh, any questions, you can tweet at me at Darren Shaw. All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, stick around. We have so many amazing talks. I, I hope you get so much out of it. I can't wait to chat with all of you on Twitter. All right. Thanks. See you on Twitter.